So very good afternoon, everyone, and what a joy it is to have Siddharth here with us uh, at the Startup Summit here in Mumbai. So you know, if you're doing something or a gathering in Mumbai, it's never complete till you actually talk about the entertainment industry. So Siddharth, of course, here has been a marvel of the entertainment well, industry, and he's sort of done it all and seen it all in this industry, and it's and how it has really got built up to this multi-billion dollar uh, of industry and of course going bigger by the day. Uh, so today we're going to talk to Siddharth about you know what the industry is looking like and how he actually chose to become an entrepreneur in the entertainment industry. Uh, you know what, what sort of got him going, what moved his cheese uh, to move from a professional to an entrepreneur and how is it that we see this industry growing bigger and better and you know how do we really become the Hollywood of the world? The Bollywood of the world, not the Bollywood of India. Uh, so let me start with. Um, oh, incidentally, I also want to show you a picture. You know, uh, Entrepreneur is a global magazine, and it's only with global icons like him, when we have them on our digital covers, that we're able to bring the global Indian picture to the world. So thank you for actually donning the uh, Entrepreneur digital cover for the month of December 2022. What a better note we could have finished this year with. So. Thank you for being there. Um, so, you know, as we start talking about the, the, the entertainment industry, you know, I would first like to know, and I'm sure you talk about this a lot internally, but for the rest of us who are not so close to the industry, what has changed for the industry post the COVID? Uh, you know, what, what was it there? What, what sort of came in and what went out for the industry altogether? Uh, to start with, thanks so much for having me here. Uh, it's, it's a pleasure to be here and to see this wonderful event that you've organized. Um, you know, it's, it's a very large question you've asked and a very relevant one and one that we are actually uh, scratching our heads about right now. But what seems to be pretty clear is that audience tastes and preferences have broadened in the course of the last two years. They've been exposed to so much more content because that's pretty much all they could be doing. Uh, they were cooped up at home. They had no choice but to look for ways to entertain themselves. And in the course of that, they've now been exposed to content from all across India as well as around the world. So their aesthetics have changed. Their openness to new genres has, has increased. And therefore, you're dealing with a much more evolved audience today. And that acceleration has happened very, very fast in the last two years. The second thing is, I think the um, we were talking about the digitalization of content for many, many years now. Uh, that penny has dropped completely, where the uh, habits and practices in the consumption have changed. Uh, the fact that they are now so used to the convenience of being able to sample content in the confines of their home and have control over the experience. Uh, they can pause, they can go forward, they can stop wherever they want to, come back to it. These are all obvious things, but a lot of people were not exposed to this in the past, and now they are. So that linear one to many without the ability to actually have control over your entertainment experience has changed. And that's made it much more difficult for, say, the theatrical experience to be something that draws audiences in unless it's supremely compelling. The other thing is that durations of content also. Um, I think now entertainment can't just be, we used to categorize it as movies and television and that's pretty much it. But today, a reel on Instagram is entertainment. You've got so many influencers putting out such amazing content that is 10 seconds long. That's also entertainment. So you're now competing with, you might make a high quality $100 million film, but you could be competing with a reel or a bunch of reels that some, some influencer has made as, at home. Or your own reel, or your own movie reel for or that your own, matter. Yeah, exactly. So I think the perception of what constitutes your competition has also changed and therefore I think it's a period of flux it's a period where everyone is wondering now what to do next and it's it's exciting and interesting but also terrifying sure you know you didn't mention the radio so I was actually going to come to podcast do you not look at podcast also as an extension you're here? right it is it is and that's another thing that takes people's captive time away from you I think us in the audiovisual business tend to be a little bit myopic and look at only our audiovisual segment as competition. But you're absolutely right when you say podcasts, when you say radio, when you say even leisure activities now, because now people have been cooped up for more than two years. They want to be able to go out and actually experience 
interpersonal connection and therefore anything that's giving them that ability live shows live performances i mean when you look at an exhibition like this for for a couple of years i'm sure you weren't able to organize something of this nature and now look at the number of people here so people are yearning for that yeah that's right um absolutely and do you know um so i also would love to know you know you there is a whole family of actors your own brothers are actors and you know uh, so were you never sort of uh, enchanted by actually being on the screen rather than behind the camera uh, so to say <laughs> well you know as a producer you are acting all the time <laughs> i'm sure my colleagues here who do production will agree with me because you've got to be many things to many people and you've got to don many hats and you have to play many roles uh, but i mean that's on a lighter note but otherwise uh, i i have done theater all through school and college so it's definitely something that i enjoyed but i think what i enjoyed even more was being behind the scenes and putting it all together and having a bit of a birds eye view on the larger uh, scheme of things i've always enjoyed that aspect of leadership and having you know multiple things happen simultaneously i think as an actor you've got to have tunnel vision and be doing one thing at one time i've never been very good at that i've always had to be doing multiple things simultaneously <laughs> yeah no i think that's that's the typical entrepreneur's bug but you know you've got such an illustrious career yourself um you've been the managing director of disney and then of course uh, also utv studios so when of course the merger also happened so you know what what was it that you said when was it that you said that no i'm not going to work for anybody i'm going to be my own boss when do you sort of mentally are able to tell that you know the time has come and i need to do my own thing so what what was the trigger for you you know unlike many born entrepreneurs i i was not a born entrepreneur i really don't think i think that's in the book only no no i think it's true because you know a lot of people coming straight out the gate of their education can't even fathom a job they need to be their own boss right from the start and they will do one thing or the other but they will find their way for me uh, being within an organization was never a problem and i've always enjoyed that i think i've had the right mentors i've had the right bosses as well who've given me the latitude and the freedom to to do my own thing my desire to branch out and start my own company never came from wanting to be my own boss really it came from wanting to do my own thing um and i think when you're part of a large conglomerate which is a media conglomerate a company like disney which is one of the best companies that you can work for within media there comes a point when you are never going to be able to be focused on one particular stream of things right uh, i was as as the md of disney i was doing consumer products i was doing movies i was doing television <coughs> live entertainment interactive and i think in that time while i enjoyed it i think i pretty much realized that audio visual content creation was where my heart lay right and therefore the logical next step was for me to branch out on my own and are you how um so how <coughs> sorry sorry you you want to make go ahead and now that you've actually plunged in so you know i realized that you said about college you leave college and you actually become an entrepreneur um but i can also tell you that most of those guys 5 years down the line think that you know i was better off had i done a job first before i become because you know you do realize that there are a lot of pitfalls so uh you know for you what what is it that you've learned in your journey of entrepreneurship you know as you said that as a producer you have to act all the time so that's a real you know that's a gold mine of information and it says so much in a line but honestly i mean you know what what is it that you've learned as you've embarked this journey so maybe like three pieces of advice you can give to our audience i'll try um to start with i think you need to always be optimistic you need to be cautiously optimistic but always optimistic because there can be many ups and downs in the journey of an entrepreneur and in our business especially there are many no's that you have to hear before you hear a yes when it comes to actors when it comes to studios when it comes to crew when it comes to all kinds of things but you need to have that self belief and that belief in the team that you've created that it's finally going to get there you will finally find it the the door will open and you will be able to go through because without that it's very easy to get disheartened and to and this any business is all about finally the emotion that you are able to put into it and the amount of positivity that you are able to bring to whatever it is that you do so i'd say always be optimistic 
but be clear headedly and cautiously optimistic that i think is very important the second thing i think is to focus on at least for me and and this is something that i i, I truly believe in focus on revenue rather than on valuation right and focus on revenue and profit because very often we can get caught up into eyeballs into clicks into uh you know uh values based on based on perceived worth and based on someone else's perception of what we are worth but it's very important that the core of your business is actually real and is actually profitable and we see this time and time again where you have boom and bust cycles where the boom happens because it is a bit of a bubble that is created by valuations and by presumptions and assumptions about a future that you haven't built on a solid foundation so that is really important have real clients have real revenue be profitable and the valuation will come is what i sincerely believe and i think the third thing for any starting out entrepreneur i think is to be is, is to pick your team correctly because your team can be actually the most the thing that can make you or that can break you so loyalty and commitment is super important number 1 and number 2 don't create large hierarchies to start with because you might be coming out of an organization where you're used to that but create a flat structure to start out with and really have everyone feel a sense of ownership yeah no i think that's that's genuinely gold mine of an advice that you've given it's you know it sounds so simple but when it really comes down to the nitty gritties of doing that in business is you know where the whole uh, challenge lies and that's where you know the more you're able to do it nicely the more sort of you grow uh, in your venture so roy kapoor studios you know your own venture so you know i've seen that what i've realized about when i look at entertainment industry abroad is that how they've come to india and gone to so many other countries whether it's a disney or a marvel you see them all over the place but we yet to see bollywood becoming the bollywood of the world so you know do you do you want to or do you have a dream of taking roy kapoor films overseas and sort of see it in various countries i mean indian diaspora is everywhere so even if you know you don't have an international audience is always indians to watch uh indian movies and indian content so what do you think it will take for bollywood to really become more established outside of india it's a great question and the short answer to my uh, the the ambition of roy kapoor films is absolutely yes we our idea is to move global and to be able to tell stories for a global audience to be able to take our stories to the world what i think the indian film industry not just the hindi film industry but generally has managed to do pretty well is to cater to the south asian diaspora overseas right because it's a captive audience it loves the content that comes out of the homeland it's waiting for it and we've been able to cater to them we're able to distribute to them we figured out the catchment areas where they live in pretty much every country around the world we've been able to be targeted and to to address them what we haven't done a good job of is moving beyond that and crossing over to even an art house world cinema audience globally and definitely not to a mainstream audience that is the next thing that we have to do <coughs> now how will that happen i think by telling stories that are as local as possible so <coughs> sorry i'm just no that's okay please go ahead so a film like dangal right about a wrestler in haryana and his two daughters their journey um sounds as local as it could possibly be and honestly we never thought that it would reach out to much beyond the south asian diaspora overseas and the indian audience but it went and did 200 million dollars in china oh. right wow. now what resonated I think what resonated is the awe and wonder of the Chinese audience that a film coming out of India about rural India could actually feel so much like their story because they are also a patriarchal society yeah. they also are a society in which the girl child probably is is not given the opportunities that the male child is where fathers want to live their dreams through their sons and not their daughters only to realize more and more that they can live their dreams through their daughters but what resonated about it was not that we were trying to pander to that audience but that we were as local as authentic as possible and that they then felt like wow humanity is so homogeneous actually 
this story about a small town in India can resonate with me so emotionally and I can be moved by it. And that word of mouth spread. I mean, a film like Parasite, right? Parasite is so local and Korean as a story. Yeah. Yeah. But we all were able to relate to it and it went and won the Best Picture Oscar, right? So the more we try to be global, the less authentic I think we will be and the less we'll be able to, to cross over. I think we need to identify the stories we're telling that can have this ability to travel and then really back them the best way possible. So a film like Last Film Show, which again, you know, is we're thankful that it's India's selection to the Academy Awards, I believe is a really good pick. And I know I'm slightly biased, but I think it's a great pick for the Academy because it's a story about a boy in a small town in Gujarat who had a dream yeah. to be a filmmaker. And that could be the dream of anyone from any small town from around the world. But because it's set in this really quaint, unique setting, that's what will be interesting for people to see and then say, it's so different, but it's so similar. Sure. And, you know, of course, we've anyway seen a lot of globalization of content during the last two years, whether it's Turkish or Korean or you name it. I mean, you know, we're seeing Polish movies dubbed in Indian um, English or just English subtitles. So do you think the way forward is really subtitling or actually creating content in that language with Indian actors or maybe even foreign actors? You know, it all depends on the subject. I think subtitling and dubbing should happen depending on whichever market reacts better to subtitling or to dubbing. There are some markets that prefer movies that are dubbed like in China. There's some that are quite used to reading subtitles. But I think it boils down to the content itself. Right. Um, if it lends itself to being told in a non-Indian language, sure. Uh, but my guess is that what they want from India is really Indian stories told in Indian languages that they are able to relate to. Sure, and, and I think it's really going to be interesting seeing Indian content doing that all over the places. Um, so, you know, we've always loved your movies. They're always so brilliant. So tell us a little more about the new movie that is coming out. So we've got quite a few lined up. We've got a film called Pippa that will be coming out early next year. That's based around the 71 Bangladesh war. And it's a story of a family on the front lines. Um, it, uh, uh, it stars Ishan Khattar, Runal Thakur and Priyanshu Penuli. It's directed by Raja Menon. And it's a tank battle that we never knew happened. So it's really about a family on the front lines of the war. Then, uh, then we've got a film called Wo Ladki Hai Kaha. Uh, starring Tapsi Pannu and Prateek Gandhi, directed by Arshad Sayyad, which is a, a great comedy. Uh, we've got a film called Baskar O Aunty that comes on Disney Hotstar, uh, starring, um, uh, starring Ishwak Singh, who was in Rocket Boys and Patal Lok. That's a story about all the aunties in your life who are constantly telling you what you should be doing in life rather than what you really want to be doing. So in a way, it ties into entrepreneurship in a sense because Here's someone who does not want to be a, have a cookie cutter life and he's got to drown out the aunties in his mother's ear who are constantly talking to her about what he should be doing. So those are the three films that are in the immediate future. And we don't give credit to the aunties. There's such great content material, no? That is true. <laughs> so, you know, I know we're coming at the end of this conversation, but maybe you want to give us some social buster for everybody, all of us to put outside there on our social handles that we heard it first. Maybe some dialogue or some some little jingle out of <laughs> some song. You got the wrong brother. <laughs> <laughs> but I will tell you that Rocket Boy season two is coming out in Jan. So that's a, if that's a reveal, then so be it. Well, ladies and gentlemen, a huge round of applause to Siddharth. Such, such wonderful work and such global work that he's doing. So you're really putting us out there in the global map, Siddharth. Thank, Thank you, you very so much. much for joining Thanks us for having today. Me.